Hello, how are you doing folks? So today we're gonna to be embarking on a brand new tutorial looking at how to script and create your very own game as a complete beginner. Now, whether you are a complete beginner or you maybe already have a little bit of experience, hopefully you'll get something out of this series regardless. But to start off with, we're just gonna take a look at some of the absolute basics of how to use Studio. And by the end of this episode, hopefully you'll be feeling a bit more confident and we're going to create our own little football game like you see here. Now, in order to use Roblox Studio, you will require a Windows or Mac computer. And if you haven't already got Studio installed, you can head to roblox.com slash create and click the button to get started. Okay, so now I'm inside Studio and I can see I'm on the new tab. I've got all these options available to me, but I'm just going to go and select the base plate. So it gives us a blank template to work from. And you can see straight away, we have the game world right in front of us here. And this is our base plate. Over to the right here, we see we've got this explorer window. We've got a properties window. And then we've got this menu bar along the top. Now yours may look a little bit different to mine. So let's check we're all on the same page here. So you'll notice that these tabs along the top here, home, model, test, view, and plugins. If you head to the view tab, and then we can toggle these menus on and off. So if I select Explore and Properties, you'll see they both disappear and it leaves us just with the game world now. So I'm gonna leave Explore and Properties enabled, but I don't need any of these other windows just yet. These are just the most important we'll need for now. Okay, so let's head back to the Home tab and you'll see there's this nice big button with a part. So we're gonna click on Part and when we do that, a new part is suddenly going to appear in the workspace here. Now, you'll notice it's appeared in the Explorer and it's underneath where it says Workspace. So you know it's inside the workspace. I can click this arrow and it will appear and disappear. And it's also in the game world right in front of us and you can see it's highlighted in blue. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see that part at the moment. It's quite far away. So we want to actually move closer with our camera. We can do that using the arrow keys. So if we click on the game world, we'll unselect the part and we can move now using the arrow keys, forwards, backwards, left and right, or as I prefer, WASD keys. And if we want to rotate the camera, we can do so by holding down the right mouse button. So if you click and hold, you can pan the camera around. And you can also zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. So now we can see the part a little bit better. Let's select it again. And now let's see if we can change its color. So right along the top here, we see there's this color drop down, and we can make it a green color, sea green we can call it. And then we can also change the material as well. So we can set this to grass. And now I've got a bit of green grass. And you'll notice as I made these changes, down in the properties window, the properties of the part have changed as well. Now, if I want to move this part around, I can just click and I can drag it around the map like so. Now, if I wanted to place the part into the air, say, that'd be quite difficult to do as I can't actually drag it up there. I need something to drag the part across in order to move it. So if I want to move the part upwards, what I can do is use the move tool. So while I've got the part selected, I go up to the top here and I can select move. And when I do that, you'll see I have these arrows now appear around the part. So if I hover over one of them, you can see they highlight and I can then just click and drag just on the Y axis or the X axis or the Z axis and just move it in that one direction, which is quite handy. So we'll put it back on the ground now and let's have a look at this next one. This is the scale tool. So I can choose to scale it if I want and I get these circles now up here. And if I click and drag one of these circles, I'm now changing its size. So we can make a piece of grass like this for us. There we go. And then of course, the last one of these is the rotate tool. So if I click that, I then get these rings appear. And if I click and drag around one of these rings, you'll see the part is now gonna rotate. But we'll just put that back to where it was for now. And we'll just leave our piece of grass. Now, rectangles aren't the only kind of parts we can add. We can also add in a sphere if we wanted. So if we click the little arrow underneath the part, we'll get a few more options here. We get sphere, a wedge, and a cylinder. So we'll add in a sphere, 
and then we see we have this ball up here right in front of us and you notice it's been made green and grassy just like the others because it's gone to our previous selection but we can change that again so how about we change it to a, a pebble for example and we'll make it a sort of whitish color there we go so it looks a bit like a ball now and maybe we'll choose to make it a bit larger there as well now as soon as we have a ball why don't we make a goal for ourselves and then we can play a game of football or soccer if you're american so i'm going to need some cylinders i'll click the drop down select a cylinder and then we've got a white pebble cylinder uh, let's make it a slightly different color slightly gray and we'll make it smooth plastic this time we'll need to rotate it round so it stands upright i could use the rotate tool but sometimes it's actually quicker you can use the r and t keys so if i press t it's going to turn the part and then it's going to stand upright all in one motion which is nice and quick and then we're going to want to place it at the end of the field we'll use the scale tool to make it a bit taller and then that's our first post done but we're going to need a second post as well so i need a way to copy this so i could copy using Control c and Control v copy and paste and then another part will appear right next to it although that's not quite ideal as you can see it's put it kind of in a funny position really not really where you want it so let's remove that part we'll press delete and instead what i quite like to use is the duplicate so that's Control d or what you can do as well is you can right click over in the explore menu you can right click and select duplicate and you'll see a new part has appeared below it although in the game world it might not look like anything has changed but if i select move and i move this part along you'll see it actually created another part inside of that one so let's move it to the side there we go we've got our two posts now and the last thing we need is a crossbar to run along the top so let's duplicate one more part for ourselves and this time i am going to use the rotate tool i'm going to rotate it round there we go and try and move it into place just like so and now i'm going to scale it a bit more so it's longer and there we go that looks pretty good so now that we have our ball and our goal let's see if we can play the game shall we so if we head to the test tab or straight on the home tab as well you can see there's this big play button and if we click this we'll actually load in with our character and oh no what's happened to our goal it's all collapsed that's no good so the reason that's happened is because roblox uses physics of course and the physics have come into play and it's just collapsed the entire structure now we don't really want the physics to be able to act on the goal like that so what we're going to do is we're going to press that stop button head back into editing and now we can select all the parts we can click and drag select everything at once and then if we go onto the properties scroll down we'll see there's this behavior option and we're going to tag the anchored property so we're going to set everything to anchored and when we do that and we run the game now we're back with our character we can see that they're stuck in place just like we wanted them we can try and push them with our character but they're not going to move anywhere and seeing as we anchored the ball as well we're not going to be able to push the ball either, which isn't what we want. So obviously we need to set that to unanchored, but everything else to anchored. Let's take another look at some of these properties now. Go back into our edit. So for the ball, we're going to set that to unanchored. There we go. We should now be able to push it. Let's take a look at some of these other properties though. You'll see there's also archivable. And if we select all of these parts, you'll see all of them have the archivable set to true. What does that do? Well, let's select them all and untick archivable this time. And we'll see nothing seems to have changed, but if we click play again, you'll notice, oh, where's our football pitch gone? It's all disappeared. And if I look inside the workspace while the game is running, you'll see the workspace is actually empty as well. There's my character, and this is the base plate, but there's nothing else here. And if I click stop and go back to editing, well, they're still here. So parts need to have the archival property set to true so they actually appear in the game.
Now, the next property we have is the can collide property. So first off, let's make sure everything is set to archivable again. And this time I'm going to untick can collide. And instead of playing the game, I'm going to click that drop down arrow and just select run this time. So the game will run, but I don't have to control the character. So if we run the game, we're going to see, oh, and the ball has dropped through the world. We don't want that. So what's happening there is the physics are still going to be applied to it, but it's not going to have any collisions. So in this case, it's just going to drop straight through everything. Obviously, we want it to have some collisions, so we'll keep that enabled. Uh, the last property down here is the locked property. Now, we'll notice that we can't currently select the base plate. I can click on it. Nothing's going to happen. I can do a big like this and try and select everything, and I still can't select the base plate. The only way to select the base plate is going to Explorer and clicking on the base plate, and then you, I can select it. And we'll notice when I look at its behavior, the locked property is set to true. So if I unselect that, set to false, and now I can actually click on the base plate and I can drag it around, which doesn't work very well, obviously, because it's so massive. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to delete the base plate like that, press the delete key, and there we go. We'd just be left with our football pitch now. So now that we've got rid of our base plate, let's see if we can expand this football pitch a little bit more. First of all, we've only got the one goal, which we probably had a second one at the other end of the field. So what we can do is we'll click and drag, select all the parts together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control and then the G key. And then everything is going to get grouped together into a model like this. So I can give it a name so I know what it is, goal. And now I can copy and paste that entire model all together. Or I can press control D, duplicate it. And then I can move the duplicated goal over to the other end of the pitch. Fantastic. And then maybe as well, I'll add in a wall around the edge of the pitch so the ball doesn't go off the edge. We'll add in a little wall like this over here, a new part. We can maybe give it a material of brick and we'll give it a kind of red color. Make it a bit higher and we'll put it around the map like so, scale it up. We're gonna want it to be on both sides of the pitch We'll scale it down a little bit. There we go. Copy that over, put it on this side. And then we're going to need one at both ends as well, aren't we? So let's copy it again. This time we're going to rotate it around. Move it over to the side. And let's make sure the pitch is a little bit longer too. There we go. Scale each little bit part. And as you do so, it should start to become a little bit more natural, scaling each part as you go. Duplicate, move the new part over. And there we go, we have our little football pitch now. The last thing we need is a spawn point. So if you don't add a spawn point, the character will just spawn in right at the middle of the world. But what we can do instead, go to the model tab, and you see there's a spawn button over here. If we click that, we'll add in a new part, which will be where the character will spawn in on top of this exact part. We can make this a little bit smaller if we want. And then we can place it right on top of the wall here. Now, you remember the wall, seeing as that's a new part we added, it probably isn't anchored. So let's go and check if our wall is anchored. Uh, it's not. So we want all of these parts to be anchored. We can select them all. And another way of doing this now, instead of just using the click and drag, it's quite difficult to just select the wall at this point. So another way we can do it is we can press the click on one. You can hold down the control key and now you can select multiple parts. So we click this one, hold down the control key still, press this one, and finally this wall. And now it allows me to select all four parts. Now I can click anchor them. And if I want, I can group them together as well and call the group wall. So now everything should be in order. Let's go and test and click play to join the game. When we spawn in, we're on top of our spawn point. And oh, our ball has disappeared. I think we might have, <laughs> whoa, we've fallen through the pitch. 
So I think the football pitch is uh, set to uncollidable. So we'll make sure we can collide with the pitch and we can collide with the ball. There we go. I think the goals should be all set up okay. Yeah, they are. So this time we'll try that again. There we go. Onto the pitch. There we go. It's safe now. And we should be able to push this ball over into the opposite goal. Hooray! Okay, there we have it then. We've got our basic little football game set up. Hopefully that's got you started with some of the basics of using Studio. And if you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel because in the next episode, we're going to continue with our game and start looking at how we can add scripts to make it a bit more exciting. But until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>